Hello, this is Dr. Newtopia, and this is Lovelution Village. Someone asked me today, what do I do uh, at Access Tucson? And I said, well, I have a TV show, and it's called Lovelution Village, and it's the Lovelution of one. <laughs> and that's sometimes how I feel about it, uh, that I have to catch everybody up about what Lovelution is all about. So tonight, we're going to be looking at that. Today, I was at Occupy Tucson, and it was really interesting to talk to a physician there who was telling me about health care and how our health care is just so inhuman that somehow medical schools make doctors so they lose their empathy for patients. They don't work with the energies of compassion. They don't hold the patient's hand. And he explained to me how we are all patients. And if you're a patient, you want to be cared for. You want to be loved on your deathbed. That's what matters to you, is the kind hand, is the nurturing voice. These are the kinds of human emotions that make medical care good. But we live in a technological society that somehow has lost the idea of love and wisdom. Now, what I'm seeing with the Occupy Tucson is a compassionate movement. What I mean by this is that just like everyone is a patient at some point in their lives and needs medical care, we are human beings who need to be sheltered from the ecological extremes of life, our climate. And especially with this global warming problem and ex extreme weather patterns, we need a shelter. Now, there's a whole class of people in Tucson that live without homes. And this is a utter crime. It's a social crime. It is a crime against humanity. But it goes on every day. Now, many of you could be like me. I feel like I am a... Right now, I'm showing you that, hey, I can talk and I look like a reasonable person. But inside, I'm really a clown. That means that I'm really hiding a lot of my emotional trauma that I feel from you at this moment. I have a aching heart. I'm one of the uh, people that belongs to the Lonely Hearts Club band. And I'm sure there are a number of you out there in our chaotic society who have grown old without love in your life. And it is, a, a, it is some kind of a, a global tragedy when this happens. And it is, it is on that level of uh, not having enough to eat and not having enough, to, enough clothes and not having education. It, you uh, are somehow deprived of love in your life as well. And this is what we're dealing with in the United States. We're dealing with uh, many people who are love deprived. They never love, learned how to love in school. School doesn't teach you how to choose a mate or how to raise children. They don't teach you about proper nutrition. All the things that make life good, they do not teach. That's why we need an educational revolution. So on that note, I am going to play my grandmother bowl uh, for all of the suffering hearts.
We all have to be light workers to ourselves, especially people who have this problem of broken hearts. Uh, and realizing, at least for me, I'm thinking about what is the narrative that I say to myself that uh, my soulmate somehow never appeared in my life. Um, I wasn't able to have contact, intimate contact with the next generation. And that, it, it, you know, I deal with the, the loneliness factor uh, because of not having a creative partnership. Um, for example, okay, I'm going to be in the old soul's procession uh, tomorrow. I've, I'm working with uh, Jody and the uh, Tucson Arts Brigade, and I'm one of the dancers in their group. So I'm going to be on stage. I hope many of you see me there. We have these fantastic costumes, but there's no like person special in my life, you know, to talk to me afterwards and tell me how they liked it or give me some criticism. So that's the kind of poverty I live in, not having uh, that kind of feedback. And that's why creative partnerships are so important for society. I think there is like this dark black hole in my heart uh, because of not having uh, this special partnership in my life that makes it very difficult for me to heal. Now I've got to be a healer of my own heart if I want to help other people. So that's what I'm trying to do is find the correct narrative of the single woman or the single person. You know, how do I view myself? What is the identity uh, when you are unable to discover a, a real love connection in your life? Uh, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm a light worker, and that uh, I'm, even though I, I'm trying to tap into the eternal moment, the eternal love that is present uh, within myself. So that is the narrative, the eternal moment. And we don't live very long. Uh, this medium that I am broadcasting to you right now is a light medium. Without these lights here, you wouldn't be able to see me. And I'm a light person. So it just, television's person, uh, perfect for being a healer on this level because of it's a light medium and I'm a light worker and I'm not here for that long a time. We all go to the grave. And so we just have this brief moment where you hope that you'll find love because that's really what matters, isn't it? That's what is the eternal now. So I'm going to make myself cry before we get to the slideshow, but let's go to the slideshow now. Okay. So a great part of my life I spent at the University of Massachusetts. And I analyzed what is wrong with education. And it, it is, goes back to what's wrong with health care. It's this lack of wisdom on campus, the lack of looking at the whole. Like the university system should be a system of the community of scholars worldwide. This flow of knowledge, like what's happening on the internet, that should be our model of how a university should function, is with this kind of oceanic crossing all the borders, having no blockages of energy anywhere, because what we need is this global truth. And if we had the seven billion of us really thinking together on how to solve our crisis, then we would be able to do it. So I was with the Occupy Tucson when we went through campus with our signs about the bailouts and Wall Street and stopping the corruption of our lives. And these were some of the students uh, that you see here. And we passed uh, so many of the students uh, at the U of A who were in their big uh, motorhomes and big uh, cars, trucks, uh, because they were there for the football game. And they were drinking and they were with their buddies and they were having their barbecues. So you got the smell of all this meat and uh, beer guzzling and just, just the frat boy kind of mentality. 
And it's just, it, it was almost like it was two different cultures colliding. The frat fraternity boys and this uh, uh, the Occupy movement that was occupying uh, the in, uh, occupying the heart in a way that creates the beloved community. So I loved the, seeing this contrast, and I'm sure that we did affect the students by walking through the, the university. And here are some of the uh, guys waiting for the football game. But it's this kind of uh, uh, mentality that now rules uh, the, the campuses. And this just needs to change. It's like maybe before the 50s and the universities were so quiet when the Vietnam War was going on. Uh, but then it just like this explosion of knowledge and truth and peace happen on the campuses. And this is what I am hoping will happen with the University of Arizona, that this love movement, this peace movement that's walking through the campus, marching, talking at the, with the students to convince them that they are part of the 99%, that most of the university is the 99%, and they need to get on board with changing society more than any other sector of the, of the society, because this is our future. The university is where our minds blossom, uh, or they get brainwashed. And that's what we saw a lot at the university, that they're brainwashed into a certain economic uh, system. And what they, the brainwash is, is that there's a hi hidden agenda to education. And what that is, that if you get a good education, you will be able to get a job in your occupation, there it is, the word again, and you will be able to then have money and you'll be able to put it in the bank and save, and you'll be able to buy a car, and you'll be able to buy a house, and then you become middle class or maybe upper middle class. So that's how the brainwash works. It's very subtle, and parents start uh, indoctrinating their, their kids to this hidden agenda of the educational system from the time that they're born. Um, so this has got to change. And then the universities have been taken over by the corporations. And I saw this uh, happen at the University of Massachusetts when the corporate takeover really happened. And the chancellors were just, they were just into it. They were getting, they wanted the big funding uh, from the uh, corporations. And here you see the band. They kind of look like a military band, but they're getting ready for the football game as well. And then the uh, eating meat. And here we go. Here's the, the protesters. And they're not the 99%. We are the 99% join us campus uh, kind of thing. And sweeping up the corruption. Love rules, money fools. And how true, true is that? So uh, what we need to do is to have love-ins on the campus to teach people about the love regime. And what is the love regime? Well, that's why I'm so brokenhearted about my life because uh, the love regime is really when the two uh, parts of our species, and I know that they're... Um, others that have different chromosome combinations. But uh, when you have the female and male united and working for the whole planetary system, that's when we find the whole system's design. So when the two are united for the good of the planet, then you have this uh, system of checks and balances. But in the Newtopian philosophy, it's always the women that have the final word in these creative partnerships. Because in the manner of sex, and sex in the Newtopian way of thinking, is sacred space. 
And that's why religions have wanted to control it so much. You know, it's a sacred space. And if we all um, don't understand the nature of l the love-sex connection, then things go very haywire in society. Like we have 7 billion people to have to deal with. That's overpopulation because we don't understand about the sex-love connection. Now, why the university is so important is because the head really controls a lot of our sexual energy. And so how you come together with somebody has something to do with, uh, well, your belief system and your occupation. Uh, what you do, that is very important to uh, having a co-creative relationship with somebody. So we want to occupy this intimate space together and to create this harmony. This is what the creative partnership is about. Now, so the educational system, if it is working for the corporations, then it isn't working for the planet. So all these young people can't find their true loves, their soulmates, because the university system is basically corrupt. So, and uh, what the jobs, not jail sign, I like that because uh, it really says a lot here in the state of, Ma of Arizona, we're building so many prisons rather than building more schools and putting money into the schools that we have and liberating them. That's what really needs to happen on campus, is that this love energy needs to liberate the universities so that our minds are truly free, creative, so that we can start seeing the way of this eternal now, so that we can start seeing a way that we can explore the cosmos in peace without nuclear weapons, without death rays, without drone technology. This is all smoke screens to uh, really what we're supposed to be doing as a, as a community of scholars. If we can understand that that's what we're, that's our goal in life is to connect all our brains together. So all our neurons uh, are, are working simultaneously in connection with each other like let's model the way our brains work and that's how they work and more protesters and that was like a bud light uh, you know this is what the value system at the university is is about drinking uh, having uh, unconscious sexuality and just go into your classes in order to get a job to be able to then work for the corporation. And more of the, uh, the students. And all these cars on campus, you know, like, what are they doing? It's so uh, unintelligent, uh, this uh, group of pre-football goers. It's just a really unintelligent atmosphere. And more of the march. And here we go, the 99%. And, you know, we just have to bless them and please uh, go and check out Occupy Tucson yourself. They moved to the Triangle uh, Park, where the Pancho Villa statue is, and uh, they are having teach-ins there. They had several on sexism today, and they had one on health care today that I know about. There will be other ones. So this is our way that we can teach a new paradigm.
and the cars, you know, this whole car thing. They're, they're trying to uh, sell the students this American way of life, and the American way of life really boils down to car ownership, maybe even more so than housing. Uh, I mean, it's cheaper than housing, so, and you can live in your car, so, hey, you got to get one if you're a college graduate. So uh, now I want to talk about where are we going? Uh, this are types of civilizations, and uh, we're in the fossil fuel plutonium-based economy now. Uh, we want to discover uranium, and the chemical industry is divided on ethnic, religious, and national lines. Learns about potential dangers. So that's where we are now. We know about the potential dangers of um, a meteor hitting the Earth. We know about the dangers of tsunamis, of extreme uh, weather. We know we have predictions about what will happen with global warming. And now, shouldn't we be acting on our knowledge? The universities are not. We just saw what they're doing. They're getting drunk. You know, they're ignoring all of these facts that are being presented to us in a way that is denying what is going on. Now we're depleting our natural resources. There's not enough water in the world. I mean, it goes on and on. And many of us are aware of this now. That's why we have this 99% because they are talking about all these crucial issues that are, we are faced with. And then we're threatened with nuclear war and ecological collapse. So we're in the middle of this communication love illusion. And I, I'm still calling it a love illusion. There are people that are calling it a revolution, but since we're having to deal with this heart issue of the suffering, compassion. I think love illusion is actually a better description of what is actually going on. And anytime you're communicating, there is this love impulsing from your heart. If you are into this vibrational shift that's going on on the planet. And this is conscious evolution. This is a term by Barbara Marx Hubbard, that we are, need to uh, be conscious of this change and redirect our energies into building the new structures that we need, the new infrastructures, the new physical structures, the new sexual structures of this design science love illusion. So the structure of this is the arcology creates the structural paradigm shift. Type 1 civilization, the planetary flow of knowledge, energy, and other resources. And then we're going to create this world energy grid using solar energy in all its various forms. And we know the, uh, we have the ability to modify the weather, that's the harp. Planetary communication system, we know that, the internet, and a planetary culture and caring economy, which is, uh, I hope that's what's happening now with the Occupy movement, that we are going into uh, a, a egalitarian uh, community-based society. But my message to the Occupy movement is that we need to Occupy Arcology, the real whole systems design city that would allow the billions of us to migrate from one pattern of civilization to a completely new pattern. And to do that, we need all of the community of scholars working on this to create the different city designs in every bioregion of the world. So it's quite a task that we are up against. And 
This task is as great as when the bacteria started forming uh, uh, symbiotic relationships in order to have breathe oxygen. Now that is a great step, that, but it is that big. We don't know exactly what we're evolving into, but we are evolving. I want to thank you for being here and listening to my heart tonight. Thank you so much for listening to me.